System operators have less and less time to operate process plans. Many additional and constantly changing tasks take up a considerable amount of their time. The challenge is to provide system operators with an optimal assessment of their plant situation by highlighting key information and to assist them with effective tools and intuitive system operation. PCS7 offers several possibilities to master this challenge. The PC7 logic matrix is a tool for creating and visualizing interlog logics based on the principle of a cause and effect matrix. Here you see a typical process plant containing a reactor. This reactor is filled by means of a wide variety of pumps and valves and is also drained through these pumps and valves. The combination of pump and valve generally requires an interlock so that a pump, for example, will not initiate a pumping action against a closed valve. These interlock logics are implemented by the PCS7 logic matrix. The logic matrix can be launched via the call icon of the OS. You can see here that the user guide for the logic matrix is illustrated in the form of a cause and effect matrix. That's the great advantage of the logic matrix. The engineering of the interlock logics is also implemented by this cause and effect matrix with the same look and feel. This enables the user to create relatively sophisticated interlock logics easily. Let's return to the operator guide and examine the functionalities of the logic matrix. We have a filter functionality that enables us to filter for corresponding causes or effects. We can say, for example, that we want to illustrate all effects or all causes that have a particular status. In this case, we select all causes with the status active. We can see that currently only one cause is active. Using the jump buttons, we look at the logic matrix to see what measuring points are involved. On the cause side, we have the valve UV104 which is currently closed. This closed valve now activates the effect on the interlock function block of the pump EU106. This means that the closed valve will lock pump 106. If we now open the valve, we see that the cause becomes inactive and the pump is released for operation. Thus, we can start the pump now. If now the pump is running and we close the valve, we see that the cause is reactivated and locks the pump via the effect. In this case, we have an effect that can be overwritten. This means that on the effect level, we can activate the override button and Despite the closed valve, we can unlock the pump again. This is required, for example, for maintenance and commissioning. We reset all the filters and we can see here that there are various node types on the interfaces. These node types, also referred to as intersections, create the logical operation of the causes and effects. In our previous use case, we had a version involving an operation that could be overwritten. And now there is an option to create operations without memory or with memory. An operation without memory means that if the cause becomes active, the effect is actuated accordingly. If the cause subsides again, the effect is automatically reset. For operations with memory, it's precisely the other way round. In other words, if the cause becomes active, the effect is also actuated. If, however, the cause subsides, the operator must first manually release and reset the effect. Let's take a look at the current example. Here we have a 2 out of 3 selection, which means that we have 3 temperature measurements. If two of these three temperatures exceed their high alarm, 
the effect is actuated accordingly. We will simulate this by looking directly at the cost properties in the logic matrix. And we will adapt the alarm limits of the temperature values. Now we will lower them and see what happens. The first temperature has exceeded its high alarm. We see that the cause has become active. But the effect is not yet actuated because we have a 2 out of 3 selection and we need at least two values that violate the alarm limits. If we now change the second alarm limit, we see that the effect is automatically actuated and the pump and the valve are blocking the hot water supply. Using the relevant magnifying glass icons for cause and effect, you can jump into the properties of the respective steps. For the cause, you now see here in the properties view that the temperature sensors T111 and 113 have triggered the high alarm and actuated the effect. On the effect side, you can see in the properties that it involves an effect with memory here, which was triggered by the matrix and is therefore active. We now have the option of overwriting the signals using bypasses in the properties windows. For example here on the effect side. This would now override the interlock of the hot water supply. We can also reverse this bypass. Likewise, we can bypass the individual cause signal or the entire cause. We have a wide array of options for bypass generation here. We see, for example, that if we bypass the second poor value, the cause will disappear again, but the effect still remains active. As previously mentioned, this is due to the operation with memory. This means that as operator, we are required to actively reset the effect using the reset button. Only then is the hot water supply released again by means of the relevant valve. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.